Welcome to this video on Thevenin's theorem. In this video, we're going to apply several of the topics we've covered previously to a circuit theorem that involves the simplification of circuits. So a fairly simple definition of the theorem is given on the screen here. To simplify circuits down to one voltage source, uh, which we call the Thevenin voltage, or VTH, and one resistance in series, which we call the Thevenin resistance. And so basically what it's, what it's saying is we can take any circuit or any linear circuit and simplify it down to something that looks like this. One uh, voltage source on the left-hand side there, that's the symbol for a DC voltage source, which we're going to call the Thevenin voltage, and one resistance in series there. Thevenin resistor and you can see there that the circuit is an open circuit it's it's not a complete circuit um, it's an open circuit and we have two output terminals on the right hand side there so it, the, the circuit theorem is simply to say that we can take more complicated circuit networks and simplify them down to just these two components and they'll have the same sort of um, operational behavior as the original circuit they should be equivalent to one another so what we're going to do is we're going to follow three steps which are hopefully going to allow us to simplify some different examples down to just these two components, this Thevenin equivalent circuit. So the first step looks like this. It's to use the voltage divider rule, which we covered in a previous video, to determine the voltage across the terminals. So we're looking at those two output terminals on the right hand side there. And if you're not familiar with the voltage divider rule, I would recommend going back to um, that video and making sure that you're happy with that because we're going to use that a lot over the next few videos when we look at these different examples of Thevenin's theorem. If we're happy with step one, step two is to short out all voltage sources and determine the total resistance from terminal A to terminal B. We'll see just what that means in just a second when we look at our first example. But we're going to short out all the voltage sources in our example, and we're going to determine the total resistance from terminal A to terminal B. And then the last step is step three, to draw the Thevenin equivalent circuit marking on values from steps one and two for the Thevenin voltage and the Thevenin resistance. And so for step three, we should end up with a circuit that looks like the one just above there uh, with just one voltage source and one resistance. So let's have a look at our first example. Um, it's not far from a Thevenin equivalent circuit anyway. Uh, we've still only got one voltage source there and we've got two resistors as opposed to one. But we're gonna follow the steps of the theorem and hopefully simplify this down to just one voltage and one resistor. So let's have a think about step one, first of all. Step one was to use the voltage divider rule to work out the voltage across the output terminals. And I'm gonna label these terminals A and B. So we want to work out the voltage across these terminals and so if we imagine there's a voltmeter in place across these terminals here we're measuring across that second resistor R2 and so thinking about our voltage divider rule we can use this rule to work out how much of our supply voltage the 12 volts is across R2 so we can set it up to look something like this the uh, Thevenin voltage is going to be whatever voltage I measure across these output terminals, and we can say that that's the supply voltage, which is 12, multiplied by a fraction, and on the top of that fraction, if you remember our video on the voltage divider rule, we put whichever resistor we're measuring across. So in this instance, we're measuring across the 220 ohm resistor, so that goes on the top. On the bottom of our potential divider, uh, or voltage divider, we put both of those resistors add it together. So 560 plus 220. And if I calculate that, I get an answer of 3.38 volts. So our Thevenin voltage, the voltage that we would measure 
um, if we were to put it a, a volt meter from terminal A to terminal B, would be 3.38 volts. So that's step one. Step two is a little bit more tricky because it involves thinking about our terminals here and how we've labeled them. So step two said to short out any voltage sources and work out the total resistance from terminal A to terminal B. So let's break that down. Uh, first of all, to short out any voltage sources. To short something out simply means to replace it with a wire. So rather than have our voltage source, our cell on the left-hand side there, supplying 12 volts, we're going to imagine that we've just replaced it with a wire. So I've short-circuited, um, I'll even make a little note there, S slash C, just to, for short-circuit. I've short-circuited that cell. And so now I've just got a circuit of two resistors, and we've got to work out the total resistance from terminal A to terminal B. And that part of the, uh, the step is quite important because it, it matters where we start and where we finish in a circuit as to what the total resistance is. So starting at A and ending up at B, well, first of all, we've got to follow the current path. So starting at A, we're actually moving along um, the wire here to this point where we have a junction and the path splits. We can either go off in this direction through R1 or we can go off in this direction through R2. And because there's a split in the circuit, it means that these two resistors must be in parallel. Uh, if, they were, if there was no split and we went through R1 and then went through R2, those resistors would be in series. But starting at A and, and going to B, we can either take this path through R1 and round through our short circuit to B, or we can take this path through R2 to B. So these two resistors, R1 and R2, are in parallel. So task two, or step two, asks us to work out the total resistance. And we know now that these two resistors are in parallel. So we can say that our Thevenin, um, our Thevenin resistance, RTH, is equal to 560 in parallel with uh, 220. Now, that double slash there is, is my shorthand for parallel, um, but if you're not sure how to work out two resistors in parallel, I would recommend going back to the video where we cover that, series and parallel resistors. But 560 in parallel with 220, it gives me an answer of 157.95 ohms. And so finally, step three asks us to draw our Thevenin equivalent circuit. Well, we know what that looks like. It's a DC power supply, a one voltage source, connected in series to one resistor. So we'll have something that looks like that with our two terminals there. And we can mark on some values here because we know that the Thevenin voltage is 3.38 volts. And we know also that the Thevenin resistance is 157.95 ohms. So what we're saying and what the theorem is saying is that these two circuits are completely equivalent to one another. I could measure any measurement that I wanted to across those output terminals. I could use a voltmeter to measure voltage. I could use an ammeter to measure current. I could use an ohmmeter to measure the resistance. And whatever measurement that I would take, I would get the same results on my original circuit as I do on my new circuit. The two are totally equivalent, but one of them is far simpler than the other. And so Thevenin's theorem is used a lot to simplify more complicated circuits into ones that are more manageable and easy to understand. We're going to have a look at more examples and more complicated examples of Thevenin's theorem and how we can simplify circuits down to just this equivalent circuit of two components. But I hope that this first video has been useful as a simple example.